Okay, it was actually below freezing last night, which is fairly rare for around here. And it is freezing in here right now. And look, a heater. That's a really cool looking heating element right there. This just reminded me of the video I watched from Padula Studio, and we should, of course, all be odd inspired by Padula Studio. I watched the video of his workbench build like every other sucker on YouTube, and it's an incredible workbench. Solid maple, burl inlays, it's incredible. But, it's also very expensive, and also took him, I think, several months to build. I'm not really looking for that right now. I'm looking for something cheap like everyone else is, too. I also don't have any way to get maple, which is pretty hard to get these days, and ridiculously expensive. But, one of the details he did was he did this little cut out in the corner to lighten the load a little bit, make it look a little nicer. Obviously this is a 3 inch leg instead of like an 8 inch leg like he had, so I'm not going to have that problem. But I still want to do it, because I think it will look cool. And I think everybody should take some inspiration from Padula when you're building a workbench. I'm going to don my artisan cloak here. Make it look like much more professional than I actually am. Let's just take a moment to admire the table saw cut here. That is just something. Even though these are plain, they are not necessarily square. That does not mean that. They are exactly the same thickness in both directions, but they are not necessarily square. If you have a bit of a rhombus shape, so basically if you squish this into a more diamond shape, you will have exactly that when it comes out of the planer. It looks really dark for some reason, but anyway, I cut these two as long as I could because I want this, this table to be level compared to the earth and compared to gravity and not compared to the wall. Okay, I'm feeling like a time lapse, so I need to clean out all the stuff. I'm gonna move it away so we can build the bench and then put some things back as they need to go. toe screw or toenail this in here, which is going to be a little bit weird. It definitely feels very wrong, but if it works, I don't really care. Actually looks good. And the sheet will run straight through there. One smooth continuous piece, it will definitely break. 28 and 7 eighths. I know I couldn't go very far without messing up. Here's my first problem. This is a piece in the front here, right? A piece, a beautiful piece. It's going to cover this and there'll be a nice piece of metal line here. But if I just put it on there, the grooves that I already cut in the 2x4s, which was dumb, will go straight through and there will be a gap. If you put one of these on one of these, the net groove is just going to go straight through and there's going to be a gap. It's going to look ugly. But if I cut out a 3 quarter inch dado on, or a rabbit on the end and sink it in, then it, it sits in there nice and it'll actually be a lot easier to do. But the entire width will be a three quarters of an inch narrower. Do I care about that? Probably not. I'm going to try to do this like a real woodworker and cut it by hand, which I never do because I'm not a real woodworker. 
I'm just a guy that plays with power tools. Almost make you believe I was a real woodworker. I feel like I've shown you this angle of this part way too many times. So that's 22. Bum, bum, bum. Eighteen and a half inch opening. And two and a half. So my buffer is down there right now, which is a radically and obviously not usable location. It is less than two feet wide. It also has to fold down. All right, all right. Minus saw, radial arm saw. In here, which is a bit smaller space than it looks like, is going to be the buffer, but we don't know how yet. Why not? Am I talking too much? I feel like I'm talking too much. But I'm gonna keep talking. Last piece in the main frame. So it looks kind of like you need a leg on every single corner. That'll be eight legs, which would be the rest of my two by fours, but it'd also be just a lot of leg. I think it'd look very leggy, it'd be too many. I definitely need another one right here. Because this is where the miter saw is gonna be whatever support I have for the fold on and stuff, I've got a one with a leg right there. So do I use one two by four and make just one leg, or do I just make two preemptively and maybe put one here? Okay. Here comes the part that I directly stole from Padula Studio when he made his workbench over there. And it's just a nice little sort of chamfer you cut out of the front on both sides. We can cut that out. Now when the guy with, from um, Padula's studio did it to cut these things, he did it with a uh, angle grinder with a cuts all discs on it. Disc on it. But I don't have one of those, so I'm gonna do this bandsaw. I just made this little jig so I cut at 45. And let's cut through on the bandsaw and hopefully it'll be um, fine. Rinse and repeat. The distance in between here and here is two and three quarter inches, so we're gonna do two and a half to make sure we don't pop above that and mess up our melon wine. <coughs> I got these four legs set up in the router jig. I'm thinking I shouldn't have though. I probably should just ran it with a, with a square or something. Cause this is gonna be really off balance. Yeah, I felt like a lot of work. This is a lot easier to do. Douglas fir. <laughs> okay, that's better. Clean up these. Check a lump. It's not touching the ground. Okay, I just glued up another stack because I want. I want a leg right there, and I want a leg right there, and I want a leg right there, and I want a leg right there, because it looks weird with just that leg. I'm gonna wear the apron, and the coat, <coughs> and my flannel shirt, and we're gonna stay warm, because it is cold. It's the next morning, by the way, and we're gonna be working on stuff now. Still like a stupid long time left.
dust on the floor, I don't even care. Something that I forgot to do, the other piece that I gotta pull out is spray all the exposed edges with clear coat. So hopefully it won't expand on me. Because there's no air conditioning in this building, so the humidity is pretty insane. Obviously, very long, and there's cutting things on it. Things that use fences, and these fences are very, very small. This one's about two feet wide, this one's about two feet wide. If I'm cutting a 10 foot piece of wood, balancing it on 10 inches of fence, if I'm cutting the very end, is not a very good idea if you want to keep a very, very square cut. So, we're not going to do that. We're going to build some dogs, and we're going to drill some holes, and we're going to have holes set so I can put them in here as stops for my miter saw and for my radial arm saw so I can have some support for my boards that I can move and not have in the way for all my other tools and it won't be a big giant fence but it'll actually be a slightly better than a fence because it won't get dust in there and make everything nice and not square. The dramatic lighting is amazing. It's just going to be a couple pieces of wood that I'm going to turn and they'll work on all the holes. So we'll grab a 2x2, two two, cut it down, center mark the ends, tap in the live center, 
them on the lathe. Get her all tightened up. Yeah, get her all turned down. And voila, we have dogs. Three ice, three ice. Small drill bit for placement. Big drill bit for final cut. Away. Up for motorcycle. Because I filmed the My Radio Arm Saw at outro from this side, I'm going to now film this one from this side, which is much better. Anyway, this is a really cool workbench. It's not a smart workbench. It's nothing new. There's nothing extraordinary about it. It's not perfectly flat. It's not perfectly customizable. The tools flip down for no other reason than to get out of the way. Nothing spectacular there. There's no flipping tables, they only just fold. That's it. This radial arm saw and the miter saw and the buffer now have a wonderful spot that I can work on. I love the dog system. I love how that the miter saw flips out of the way so I can use the radial arm saw. I like the whole thing. It looks really good. It fit it matches my other workbench that I made before. It's all great. Thank you for watching all the way through. Again, like this video, comment on this video, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.